Utopia is Travis Scott's long-awaited album since Astroworld's release five years ago, which shook the world and stapled his career into many GOAT statuses. So you best believe I was excited for this new one to come out. Me and Killian from the One Train video waited till midnight. We got in the car and blasted the volume to get the full Utopia experience. And let me tell you, I love it. If I'm being completely honest, this is exactly what I wanted from him. His music is always so world building. It's loud, it's grand with all these psychedelic trap inflections and he even switches it up with some mellow and low key cuts that are honestly beautiful. But first, let me jump into the actual track list. The record kicks off with Hyena, which has Travis braggadociously flowing over this gigantic modulation of a 90s like jig. The moment I heard this song, I knew what I was in for. The wait is finally over. We're past the point of no return as we step into the next universe he's been cooking up for us. Layers on layers of sound. It's enough to send shivers up my spine as the song progresses and ends with that clip from Funkadelic's Maggot Brain of George Clinton speaking, which you might recognize his voice from Kendrick Lamar's Wesley's Theory, finally closing with a drawn-out classic Mike Dean synth line. I sit there wondering what's in store for us in the rest of the album, but thankfully we have Thank God Next, which takes a more mellowed out and eerie approach in the first half, as if it's crawling and lurking around in your head. Travis spends most of the song's duration expressing his gratitude towards what he's been blessed with in his life, even having his daughter Stormy throw in an ad-lib after the instrumental break and switch. He mentions here how he's running it back since Astroworld had so many hits and even admitted to getting upset when it lost to Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy at the Grammys. Casey kills it on the chorus. They both did their thing on this one, making it one of my favorite cuts off the record. Next, we switch to Modern Jam, which I do like and think is a cool and fun track. But in all honesty, given the credits behind this, like production from Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo, which if you don't know is one half of Daft Punk, and the Tizo Touchdown, I feel like there could have been more done with it. The drum beat is nice, and I guess taken at face value, it's simple, it does exactly what it wants to do, and I'm all here for it. It's a Modern Jam. After this, we switch to My Eyes, which is a beautiful, somber melody discussing what it's like to see through Travis Scott's point of view or his eyes. It's definitely reminiscent of songs like Astro Thunder or Coffee Bean, which if you've watched my Travis Scott ranking video, you'll know I love both. So you best believe this one will be for the books. If anyone's going to use autotune like this, it's bound to be Travis Scott. I, I mean, it kind of reminds me of Frank Ocean's Nikes, but anyways, the weird high pitched vocals are cool. And I especially like the beat switch in the latter half. Very chill stuff. God's Country has possibly one of the most infectious beats in the track list for being the shortest on the album. It's so weird with all these high refrain vocals and slow down mixes. It immediately hit me as very Kanye-esque. Okay, this is post writing the script Nate here, but apparently God's Country was initially on the first Donna track list, which makes complete sense to me now. Apparently this has been a familiar leak floating around the internet for a bit, but I don't really listen to leaks like that for this exact reason. I want everything official I hear to be fresh, but I can definitely hear the major Ye influence on not only this one, but for most of the record. But regardless, I love this cut. Next, we have Sirens, which is an upbeat track that caught my attention immediately. The drums are incredible and really reminds me of the Festi Vial Travis tells us to meet him at. Not much to say about this one. The Drake outro is a bit goofy. I think the repeated lookout vocal snippet looping is whack in a great way, but this one's definitely a strong highlight. Meltdown hits us straight away with the classic Ya yeah from Drake, which by the way, he absolutely bodied this song. I feel like anytime him and Travis collab, it's always guaranteed to be a hit, like Sicko Mode, Fair Trade, Company, this song, and probably more. The Star Wars Stormtrooper lasers are good random fun, but this is another iconic three-parter that's one of the highlights on the record for me. After that one, we got Fiend, which, uh, Cardi? When I first heard this, I really didn't think it was him. I just thought it was some impersonator. I mean, it's good to hear from this guy again, considering we got like two seconds of runtime on his song with The Weeknd this year. But for real, he got me thinking he was someone else. Not entirely sure how I feel about his verse, but everything else, like the chorus, the beat, everything, Travis's part, everything absolutely slaps. A bit repetitive, but that's exactly the point, and I like it a lot. In all honesty, I really wish I liked Del Resto Echoes more than I do. I'm not a huge fan of this one, which is shocking considering how much I like Beyonce and her music. And the addition of Bon Iver is such an outlandish combination. I feel like on paper, this should work way more for me than it does. But no, this track is just such a throwaway. It's pretty disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Thankfully, the album hops right back with I Know. This one probably has the grimmest lyrics out of the rest, discussing his use of drugs and alcohol, worrying about those around him judging him. I absolutely love this type of sound. It's slow, it's dark, and Travis melodically singing is just what the song needs over that somber piano. Topia Twins is a more hard-hitting song that sounds like something he would have put out back in the Astroworld era. It's catchy, but relatively empty in my opinion. There's nothing inherently wrong with this song, the features are good, but I can listen to it in its entirety without really feeling much of anything. I'm not really mad it's occupying space on the album, but also not going absolutely crazy over it being there. It's just kind of harmless to me.
Circus Maximus is just a worse version of Kanye's black skinhead, but not like terrible to the point where I have to turn it off. It's cute, but The Weeknd definitely had to flex his gorgeous voice to give some reason for me to come back to this one. I do have to watch that film he directed that shares the same name as this song. Let me know what y'all think of it. Comment down below if it's worth my time, but I haven't even seen it yet. Parasail is such a beautiful little interlude type song with a melancholic narration from Dave Chappelle throughout its duration. This track is hypnotic and spacious, giving Young Lean some time to sing, and I guess Don Tolliver makes an appearance to say a single word throughout the entirety of Utopia, Parasail. This one's really sad, and I like it. I still don't know how to feel about Schizo. I get the whole beat switching up to parallel a schizophrenic's thoughts, but most of these instrumentals low-key kinda suck, I'm not gonna lie. Young Thug's presence was nice, but I don't have many positive things to say about this song, apart from the fact that the last minute was great. That last beat, whatever, like jazz or whatever, I love that so much. If the whole song was just that beat, it'd be one of my favorite songs on the album. But this did not have to be six minutes, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyways, moving on to Lost Forever, we have one of my favorite features back to back from James Blake to West Side Gun. I went into this album blind. Like I said before, I didn't listen to any leaks or see any confirmed features ahead of time. So hearing Gun hop on this Alchemist beat was such a rush of joy. I'm glad he's finally breaking out into the mainstream world with this. I can only think of his collaborations with Tyler the Creator and his short presence on Donda. But I've been recently getting into his music. 2023 has definitely been the year of Griselda for me, so this was a great song. Next, we have Love, which its sound takes us back to the days before rodeo days. Travis even collaborates with Kid Cudi here, and they both alternate each of their love and appreciation for their audiences. This one's dope, and I'll probably be coming back to this one more often than not. K-pop seemed to have disappointed a lot of people when it first came out as the album single, but me being a Bad Bunny fan loved it because, if we're being honest, it's just a Bad Bunny Spanish pop song. It's smooth, it's warm. I will say I felt as though it should have been cut from the album because it does feel very out of place on Utopia considering it doesn't fit the sound of the rest of its coworkers. Definitely not a miss, but it's better as a single. Telekinesis is, I will say right now, probably my favorite song on the whole album if I had to choose one. Uh, obviously that's bound to change given at how new and fresh this body of music is, but that's what I'm feeling right now. I love Future's voice so much and more than anyone else's. Him and SZA really did their thing on this one, creating a magical soundscape that gives my ears an absolute treat. The album's closing track, Till Further Notice, features phenomenal production from Metro Boomin, giving James Blake the right motions to truly pop off in his own world. Reminiscent of Hummingbird, he sings so well. 21 Savage does have a better presence on this one than he did on Utopia Twins, in my personal opinion. Travis brings some really well-needed energy to send us off, letting us know that... We should be on standby for future work. Overall, I really like the album. As a huge fan of his work, I am well satisfied after a five year wait from his last studio record. I think the highlights on this album are great and the low points aren't even bad. Despite my criticism, I still think its weaknesses are still fine. I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. It is kind of hard to shake off the impression that most of these sound like Kanye throwaways, but I think Travis did his thing incorporating his own unique elements, sounds and vocals, adding to it, giving us a well orchestrated piece of work. Do I think this is album of the year material? You'll have to wait and see until my end of the year favorites video comes out. That's where I list off the records I enjoyed the most from the year. I'll also wait for that video to announce what I'd rate this album out of 10 because I still need time to sit with it. But thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one.